Wait. Hello. Okay, there it is. I didn't think I had my sound on. Okay, Taylor's theorem and estimating remainders. Okay, and we may even talk about what happens when the radius of convergence is finite. Hmm. Yes, that's a problem. So, okay, this is a Taylor series. It's related to Maclaurin. Okay, remember Maclaurin was this. All right, so there's Maclaurin, a Maclaurin series. Okay, Maclaurin is in powers of x, and it's good for x equal to a, or x near a. Uh, let's see, how did I write this? Oh, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. It's good for x equals 0, or near 0, say some radius of convergence to round 0, or everywhere, right? That's Maclaurin. That's what we've been doing up to now. But what if the radius of convergence is finite? So it's good near zero. But you need a good somewhere else, like 10. You want to find f of 10. Remember this is supposed to be a function? You're estimating f of, f of 10 with this thing, let's say? And the radius of convergence doesn't include 10, let's say? You can shift Maclaurin around and change the interval of convergence. You can shift the center. And that's what Taylor did. Here's Taylor. This is not new, you have this. This is new. This is a Taylor series. Maclaurin is a special case. It goes like this. Now remember what happens in a function. If you had f of x and then you had f of x minus a, isn't that a shift to the right a units? The function shifts to the right translations, yes? All right, that's all I'm doing. I'm taking a Maclaurin and I'm shifting it a units. So, it's, it's so that it's center of radius, center of uh, convergence is somewhere else, more convenient if I need it to be there, all right? So what do you get? Well, plug in k is 0. You get something that's 0 is 1, c0, some constant, plus plug in k equals 1. Some other constant, c1, this thing to the 1, plus c2, plus c3. Well, I'm running out of space here, so... C3 plus, 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 okay? Now what's good about this is the interval convergence changes. It's either good at A only, which is not very exciting, because to generate this, you're going to need F of A, F prime of A, F double prime of A, all that kind of fun stuff. So I already knew F of A. That's silly. Or near A. So it's going to be A minus a certain radius and A, whoops, Sorry, between a minus certain radius and a plus certain radius, right? So say, for example, um, a is the, the uh, series is centered at like 10, and the radius of convergence is 1. I'm saying it's either good at 10 or it's good between 1 and 11, if a is 10 and r is 1, let's say. So instead of a being 0 all the time, it could be whatever you want. If you make a 0, this is Maclaurin. It's good at 0. Good near zero, right? Neg between negative r and r. Whoops, plus. Negative a, r and r, right? Okay, so if r is a radius of convergence of 1 and the center is, I don't know, like 10, then I'm saying, okay, it's good between 9 and 11. All right. Or everywhere. It could still be good everywhere. We find that out using the ratio test for absolute convergence for power series. Okay, so let's take a look at such a series. Here's one. All right. Are you ready? Can I move ahead of this? That's a Taylor series. That's a Maclaurin series. Same thing, except there's no A here. Same thing as Maclaurin if you let A equal zero. Okay? I'm just shifting to the right A units. Or to the left if A is negative. Okay, so here's an example. Let's say I had this series. X minus 2 over 2 minus x minus 2 squared over 2 times 2 squared. Um, okay, plus x minus 2 cubed over 3 times 2 cubed. That's times. Okay, uh, minus. Alrighty. So, can you get me a general term? 
Part A. Let's say this is a free response question. Part A. What's the general term? Any ideas? Can you write this as sigma? Yeah. All right. What do you think? Sigma what? Um, K, goes K starts at what? K to zero. Zero? To infinity? What? X minus two to the K. Okay. Hmm. Well, do you want start? Do you want k to start at one? Because look at the powers: three, two, one, three, two. How about we start with one? That'll be easier. So this is good then, right? Then this is two to the three, two to the two, two to the one. So two to the k. But what about the three, the two, and the one? That's just k. Okay. Good. So there's your general term. Um, wait, we forgot one thing. What did we forget? Right, so is it negative 1 to the k? Not if you start at 1. Why not? You done already? Oh my goodness. I think he got 7 and 8. Nobody else did. C, D, D, A, 2. I think you missed 6. So 9. I think it's a 9, but I'll check later for sure. Okay. It's a 9 before the ridiculous curve. <laughs> Is this correct? Yeah, we got a ridiculous curve on this one. All right, is this right? What's wrong with it? Actually, it's wrong. Yeah, if you plug in 1, you get negative 1 to the 1 is negative to start and then positive. That's backwards. So how do you fix it? Add 1 to this. K plus 1. Just shift it off. Or K minus 1. Just shift it a little bit. Okay, so there's a the general term. That was part A. Now that you've got a general term... Part B is what's the radius of convergence. Whatever function this is, hopefully this is some kind of function. I don't know what it is. But whatever that function is, if you graph it and you graph it, where do they match? That's the radius of convergence. Remember, it has to be near. Look at the, what this is. Powers of x minus what? 2. Remember, Taylor is in powers of x minus a. So a is 2. So what do we know about the interval convergence? It's only 2, it's centered at 2, so it's only 2, or near 2, or everywhere. We've got to figure out which one it is. I know it's got, it's got to be at least this. All right. So how do you figure it out? It's got to pay, be a radius of convergence about 2. It could be 2, it could be near 2, it could be everything. Well, because if we plug in 1 now, k plus 1 is 2, negative, two squared, negative 1 squared is positive 1, I start positive. That's just a fudge factor. You can do k minus 1 if you want. Big deal. Right. Or you can go crazy here and put a 0 there. You put a 0 there, keep the k. Then you have to do k plus 1 here, k plus 1 here. You've got to fudge it a little bit to get the pattern that you want. Okay? But I think this is probably the simplest way to write it. Okay, so let's invoke the ratio test for absolute convergence of power series. And what does that say? It says let rho be the limit as k goes crazy of the absolute value of u sub k plus 1 over u sub k. Now, if this is u sub k, how do you write u sub k plus 1? x minus 2 to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 over k plus 1. All right. And then we're going to divide by u sub k, but this is u sub k. So how do you divide by this? Reciprocal. So just write this. And um, what happened to the negative? There's the ratio test for power series, which we did last time. What happened to the negative one? Well, it's absolute value, so it goes away. Who cares? Now we're going to force the issue. We're going to solve for all x values such that this limit is... What's good about ratio tests? Rho tests are good or com show convergence when? When rho is less than 1. So we're going to force the issue. We're going to make this less than 1. We're going to find the x values that make this less than 1. Those are the x values that work in this statement. Okay? Those are the x values that make this statement true. All right? That's what we're looking for. All right? It may not be every single x value in the world. It may only be x equals 2. That's sort of a, a problem, but there you go. All right, so let's simplify this mess. X minus 2 to the K into X minus 2 to the K plus 1 is just... Mm, what? Careful. 
Yeah. Oh, you're the, you're already here. Yeah. Okay. What is you? How do you divide two powers of the same base? You subtract the exponents. So what do you get? K plus one minus k is one. So it's just x minus two to the one. Okay. What about two to the k over two to the k plus one? Same thing. Powers. It leaves a 2 in the denominator, right? And then this doesn't reduce. k over k plus 1. All right, so now this is a limit in k. We've got to do this limit. The examples we've seen up to now, the k's disappeared, and that we had, then we had an infinite radius of convergence. Here the k's don't disappear, so we'll have a finite interval of convergence. Okay. What's the limit as k gets huge of k over k plus 1? This is a constant, remember. I'm plugging in a certain value of x to see if the function works, right? This is the variable. k is going wild, so... 